my parents took my sister and me to a lot of classes and concerts. The ones that I ended up enjoying the most featured a violinist, a harpist, or best case scenario, both. <laughs> I dreamed of someday learning to play these instruments. In third grade, I had the opportunity to learn to play the violin, which I readily took, but I never got around to learning to play the harp. I feel like it was a constant topic in our household. When are we going to get to more of our harp lessons? I was constantly asking, but it just never worked out, which is why I'm so happy that I was able to learn to play and build my own harp for my senior project. One of the first questions that arose after I decided on my topic was, who is going to teach me? I didn't have to look far. My dad used to play gigs and actually went to college with uh, Mrs. Robin Gordon Cartier. I reached out to her. She happily agreed to become my teacher and my first out-of-school mentor. I love my harp lessons. They leave me feeling refreshed, rejuvenated, and inspired. The way Mrs. Cartier teaches is very personal and efficient. I learned so much in these past few months. There were a few challenging aspects for me when I first started to play. One was that I had to grow comfortable with the position or the posture. You sit really straight, keep your elbows up, and your fingers lifted downwards. It's kind of difficult, so. Yeah. I also had to learn the bass club because I'm a violinist. I never had the need to. One of the biggest problems for me, or kind of things that I was worried about, was if I would be able to learn to play two separate lines of music simultaneously. As a violinist, again, I never had to deal with that, but uh, Mrs. Cartier has had many students and she taught me in a way that felt natural and effective. The second part of my project was actually building the heart. Originally, I looked into maybe buying a ready-made heart, but after realizing that that would cost between $3,000 to $5,000, if not more, depending on the model, I quickly turned to maybe building one. I was talking to some specialists. I, I decided on the Jolie Harp from the Music Makers Kit. The Jolie Harp is very light. It's about 20 pounds. It's quite small. Um, it's very stable and has a warm tone. It was just the perfect version. I asked my dad to become my mentor because he's a good craftsman, so I have two out-of-school mentors. We worked in our makeshift workshop, also known as the garage. <laughs> uh, we had a great time. I learned a lot from him. We listened to NPR, WPSR, <laughs> very <laughs> long companion. <laughs> had some great conversations. I really cherish um, everything that I learned from him and the time that we shared. I'm going to show you a few slides detailing the building process. This is how the harp kit arrived. Everything was included and it arrived quickly. In this picture, I am gluing support into the frame of the sound box. We used a special veneer glue that didn't bleed. The harp kit came with a birchwood kind of plywood soundboard. It's very strong, but didn't look so nice. So after doing some research, we realized that a lot of good harps have a spruce soundboard. We called the music maker's company and they happily sold us um, some very thin layers of spruce. Here I'm book binding them together because I wanted them to be aligned. Because we covered the pre-punched holes on the soundboard with the spruce, I had to make a template of the holes that would make way for the spruce layer. Once the soundboard was finished, I wrote in some, you know, details, and then I chose the quote, where words fail, music speaks by Hans Christian Andersen. I just liked it. It seemed like it fit for a hard for an instrument. <laughs> in this picture, I am cleaning glue residue off the closed sound box of the screen. <laughs> in this picture, I'm expanding the trim. We had a few pieces. Adding the trim to the sound um, box was Difficult, we had to make sure that the corners were aligned and that nothing moved. Puppy break! <laughs> <laughs> My dog was there, every stuff was away, and I felt that she deserved some recognition. <laughs> <laughs>
Here I am attaching the pillar to the arch. Once all the pieces were assembled, we started polishing the harp. I had hoped to French polish my harp, but because of time, I had to use Quailasol, which is a good alternative. It's applied in the same way, but just takes a shorter time. This is a close-up of the finished polished soundboard. You can see the screw looks really nice in the picture, and we added the eyes. <coughs> Here I'm drilling in the bridge pins, which is what the strings would rest on. And this is a close-up of the tuning pins. Once all that was done, we started stringing the harp. It took about three hours, but it was one of the most rewarding experiences because you could really see the harp come together. And this is the finished product. <laughs> medley of songs of sorts, of, uh, kind of showing the process of doing to play the harp. <laughs> with the right hand using just one finger, pointer finger. <laughs> this is a melody. Um, the words kind of stuck with me there. See my heart, hear me play. I will practice every day. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Arpad with the Glissando. I'm just going to play a short melody featuring a Glissando. Thank you. 
you taught me the heart and also so much about the world. This project would not have been possible without you, and I cherish every single moment that you share. Thank you.